get you to read some comments before yes. we do what we do. I ask people to tell me what they did. You listen to the speech? What did you make of it? Are yeah. you convinced? Yeah. Were you impressed? What are some of the comments coming Loads in? of the comments. Bernard Eugene from East Lagoon is saying, Bernard and team, good morning. Yesterday, listening to the vice president, if not for the fact that I'm a Ghanaian and I also live in Ghana, I would have thought the vice president is the opposition leader. Hmm. Okay. As a 24-year-old uh, gentleman, I've come across, uh, I've come and moved, as I've come, he uses the same road where we they use them. All right, I think it's a bit confusing, so just yeah, <laughs> call it it's right. so clear. It says, Our parents will lie to us to come close when we are wrong, and they will assure you that you wouldn't be beaten. But the moment you go near, you receive the greatest beatings in your life. Also, there is a theory which states that some scientists create viruses for their own wealth by spreading these viruses and then provide vaccines at a fee to nations. Dr. Baumia, I think, is using this approach on Ghanaians. You create a virus and then turn around to say you will deal with it. For me, I think this is a big blackmail, disrespect and cheat and a clean attempt uh, to fund food, the citizens of Ghana. May God help us. No apologies, but I have... Dr. Baumia was indeed bold, reading his bold vision. How can you tell us you will abolish taxes that you joined hands to introduce? He was speaking like an opposition party leader because everything he said was against his daddy's ruling. Drivers mate who can't say bus stop when we get to our destination. We are mate, Ben. Station master Kra, you won't get... Belinda from Temasenda through. I'm not convinced at all because he's part of the problem. Good morning, Bernard. Baumia's speech suggests that he's not on the same page with the policies of his boss. He had a wonderful speech, but as a football-loving person, I didn't like the fact that he didn't delve deeper into football issues. All in all, he was good. I'm Safu Manuel from Community 19. Bernard, I couldn't be bothered with Dr. Baumia's speech. What <laughs> new thing does he have to say? After eight years as VIP, the weak fundamentals have exposed him now from Sakumono. Since that, I think the vice president was talking as if he's an opposition candidate than uh, uh, someone in government. And again, I didn't see any continuity in terms of policies from the current government, which he's an integral part of. I personally don't see any hope in him. Wisdom, send that through from Tema. Good morning, Bernard and team. So the vice president cannot do anything to reverse these taxes now, but wants or needs us to make him president before he can abolish them. Hmm, no comments. William from Takrade sent that. Baumia's presentation is rhetoric. How can his vision be a reversal of some of the programs of the current government he is part of? So, as vice president, why didn't he propose uh, all these ideas he's espousing now to be implemented in the eight years? The curriculum was changed just two years ago. Even textbooks to support teaching and learning have not been provided. And he's talking about a new one. Mm. Didn't add your name. These taxes are necessary because of the IMF deal. Then he promises to remove them when he comes to power. Like the IMF deal will go now when he's voted into power. Kobe from Adenta is not happy at all. Yeah, yeah. Bernard, why didn't the drivers made that's Dr. Baumia tell the driver Nanado and the car owners, the NPP, that the passengers were not happy with the music they were playing on the bus. I was surprised to see them clap at statements reversing bad decisions they took in the past. The mate can never be a good driver today. Nanaya from St. So, good morning. Did Dr. Baumia really say he's going to make national service optional? If yes, then it seems he doesn't appreciate the brain and intent behind the NSS, which of course has not seen any significant improvement over the years. Thank you, Alfredo Mensa uh, Onuma. Good morning, Ben. The speech is just another pack of promises that won't be honored. I know most people see through him like a plain glass. Good morning, Bernard. I listened keenly to the vice president who made a lot of failed promises on behalf of the president some time ago. Even though he spoke well, I think a decor... Okay, so... And I know it's from my I don't say that. Bernard McAfee from London. I listened to Dr. Baumia speak yesterday and I can simply see only one thing. Create a despondent system or situation and then let Baumia show up as the savior of the day, proposing solutions for the same problems he contributed to. Mm. Cheers. Hello, Bernard. It seems to me that the uh, Baumia... Dr. Baumia dissociated himself from the performance of this government, and it's too late for him. If he wanted to be clean, he should have come out with a lecture long before we got here. Uh, Saulisu Governor is sending this from Bimbela. 
Bernard. Mm. This speech is full of unnecessary applause and unnecessary hype, and there is nothing in it. This is Alexis from Tema Community 24. For free, All right, so it's 829, and those are some of the sentiments coming in. I think the general sentiment is like, you know, yeah. yeah. Nathan, I, I don't know what you think, though. I, I, I get a sense that this was always going to be difficult. Oh, yeah. And it's not even the quality of the speech. No, no, no. It's about where we are in in our lives and what Baumia represents. Yes. I think this emergence into our political landscape prior to the 2016 election, between 2014, 2015, 2016, 2013 was where he really came into his own election petition, those lectures. So he became this arrowhead of the MPP's economic aid programs in terms of the campaign. Yeah. So, and the president touted him as the man who will lead his economic management team. We've heard of Safi Mafu say this as well. So, in a sense, the expectations of Ghanaians were heightened by the fact that there's a political uh, economic Maradona supporting an adult <laughs> political experience. <laughs> so, seven years after they came to office, we are in possibly the most difficult economic crisis in a whole generation. I think in probably 40 years. We haven't seen this before. All right. Now, if you are in the most serious economic crisis in a generation, yes, you can pick and say some of it was caused by mismanagement, some of it was caused by external forces. But I think where people are right now, the, the rhetoric of Baumia doesn't really cut it anymore. So it's That's not necessarily the call. speech. So it will not even be fair to judge the speech first. So at first, let's talk about where we are in the man. Yes. All right. He was vice president. And you notice that in the speech, he tried to say, look, as vice president, the fiscal policy is finance minister, which is true. Monetary, Monetary policy is BOG, which is BOG. true. And he was doing digital. But the way it was hyped and the way he was positioned, yes. he was the guy leading the economy. And Osafo Mafu confirms this. So the, the, the explaining that there were people directly in charge of fiscal and monetary, I don't think people buy that. right? You are the guy who was the main arrowhead of the economic plan. Yeah. And... We understand the vice president's ultimate authority, but you cannot make it seem as if your only role was digital. That's normal because you are the same guy who said that we've put the key and the lock, uh, the the and the lock and key. Yeah. Do you get it? So, so that's number one around trying to dissociate himself from the lead. And then saying, for example, that the EMT is a advisory. Yeah, that that that, 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 that doesn't work for me. All right, so. I feel like what Baum, Dr. Baumia's speechwriters ought to have done was to have reflected more soberly on where Ghana is today mm. and started with an apology. All right. Basically to say, look, I came with a lot of promises and I really wanted to make your life better. Things started well, but things are not going well. And we have to, we, we take responsibility. Well, that's one thing Ghanaian politicians yeah. hardly do. Well, maybe, never do. maybe I, I live in a cloud cuckoo land, but I am saying that <laughs> yeah. for where Ghanaians are today and for what they've seen in their lives, their speech probably ought to, ought to have started with accepting responsibility. Mm, ownership, taking ownership. To say, for because we are. we are not in a good place. Mm. I don't have the time to go through <laughs> yeah. the very, I can just have four examples. Look, yeah. 2017 banking crisis, people lost their jobs. True. Fine, the banking sector, we don't know whether it's stronger or weaker. You can say what you want to say. Lots of people lost their jobs over... 300 savings and low microfinance and companies were shut down. That's a massive chunk. Then there's a whole men's gold thing. Yeah. Then you have COVID-19 coming with the concomitant problems of people losing their jobs, people dying, yeah. all right? Businesses collapsing. Then there was a currency collapse of 2022 mm. where you had the third to fourth quarter of that year, CD moved from three, four to 12-ish, right? People lost income. Then you have the debt exchange, which you started with the domestic one. You know, you went before you went. In fact, there was even the e levy, and the, I won't go to IMF. And then there's the debt exchange where people's monies were given haircuts. Even the president said he was going to give them the haircuts. And then there's also the taxes. So it's like crisis after crisis after crisis. So when you take all of that, the economy is in shambles, at least compared to what we were promised. So I thought they would come and say, look, before I talk about what I want to do, I want to say, as the guy who led the economic management team, I take some responsibility for this. And I want to say that even though not everything was our fault, what leadership does is to take responsibility. So we do take responsibility 
And we are promising that since we think we are turning the corner, we'll continue on that. Something of that nature. I don't want to write a speech. So, but for me, the, the whole point of coming to say, look, we have been doing well before COVID came. So everything was going well. Mm. And then if you compare us to the NDC, we are better, we created better jobs. Interest rate, we had a lower depreciation rate. I find that completely out of touch with every sentiment. Like, and I'm not saying politicians shouldn't compare records, but look, look at this, the amount of time dedicated to that. You get me? So it, it, it's not, it, it doesn't sync with the reality of Ghanaians. That's why a lot of people are aloof. Like, what are you saying? We are not doing, what do you know? Yeah. Now somebody get 10 and I get 11. We are, we are talking about reality. The speech will be judged on the basis of the, our reality. And our reality is we are in a very bad place. So it's going to be a tough thing. And then to not start it with an admission, mm. but with this idea that NDC is the standard, so we did better than NDC, that's another problem. Because we've said it many times that we, we are not saying don't compare record with NDC, but there's a lot of air time spent on that. All right? It's like saying, look, your former girlfriend used to beat you a lot and I just beat you a little, so I'm better than him. <laughs> that, I, I don't beat you as frequently yes, as you I, used to. I changed that guy because I wanted... Something a relationship that, that's better. better. So don't tell me I'm a less of two evils. That's the kind of thing I'm hearing there. Yeah. All right. Then the whole Akufado record and how to dissociate, it's, it's terrible. It's complicated because you are, you, are, you are, on one hand, you're saying this government of which you are part of did better than Mahama, but you are still taking a clean break from any of the decisions they are taking. So a lot of taxes that you say you are going to remove. I mean, you're in the team now. Are you sort of trying to say to us that we should vote for you then in 2025 you remove those taxes? So are you saying that you are completely powerless? Even the general secretary, even the national organizer have come out to say clearly, imagine Nana B said, scrap the 15% VAT on yeah. electricity. Nana B is just one guy. Yeah. Other people said it, but they scrapped it. Are you saying that Bamiya doesn't have more cloud than Nana B? Do you get my point? So Nana B came out. He's, look, Justin Kodia said, do a reshuffle. Justin Kodia is a young man. He spoke his mind. Okay, so on what occasion has the vice president come to say e levy is a bad idea? I disagree with it. Fine, you can say in government it's a collective decision, all of those things. But we also want to see the man, we want to see the man stand out to say, I stand for this. It's I will not take, point. I take a principle position. I cannot. You see people take positions on things when they are voting, some of these US and things like on this one. I, you know, we didn't see that. Fine, you can say a general secretary is different from a vice president. I understand that. Yeah. But if you are offering yourself for us to vote for you, you need to yeah. let us know mm -hmm. that on principle, on this point, I fundamentally disagree. That may not be good for you in governance, but it could help your politics. But you didn't do it. So to now come and say, I'll do a flat rate for tax. I will remove the e levy. Uh, e -levy. I'll remove betting tax. What are you talking about? These taxes were just introduced. All right. So I don't think people will buy that. All right. And it's a hard sell. Okay. So whilst... He has some great ideas in there. He needs to work on his credibility. And I think for Ghanaians, your credibility is based on first accepting, admitting the facts. A leader's first job is to define the reality. Mm. I don't know. You said that Ghanaians don't, Ghanaians just don't apologize or whatever. But I feel like maybe you should show us you are different. Hand on heart. I came with a lot of promises. I overpromised and I underdelivered. Let me insult you, but you say, look, we have to start introducing some honesty into our policy. So I, I promised too much because yeah. I didn't know. Kufo said it. He said when he was in opposition, he said a lot of them, a few, he didn't know. Do that. Then, so it's like, we have a fight as a couple. You come, you don't apologize and you want to start mending the thing. No, you can't. You need to tell her. You need to take responsibility for where we are. You haven't done that. So everything else you say is passing through my ears. Do you yeah. get me? So I can't hear. Then, then, the, 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 when the economy is, is the main issue, yeah. it's not how well you speak. Yeah. It's what people feel. When the economy is the main issue, it's not how no, well no, no. you speak. It's, it's how the it's, people It's what feel. people feel. So because on that point, he, he's yeah. up against an wow. uphill task. Yes. Wow. task. Because what, what is, the economy boils down to whether or not I'm okay. Your cost of living. My cost of living. Whether or not, when I go to the market, I can buy. Whether or not, if I'm in business, my business will strive right? Mm. Whether or not there are jobs to do or mm. whether or not people can get employed and survive and live very dignified lives. Because the, the long and short of being in leadership or being in government is to ensure that your people are better off than when you took over. So if you've been in government for seven years 
And after seven years, you look at this, the reality. Walk around. Walk around and see the young people who are living in despair. A few months ago, young people masked up to demonstrate, not because they had time and energy, but because they were looking at their own realities. Amalgamate those realities and they realize that things were just not working. So if you get the opportunity and you say you want to be president, and yet nothing you tell us Mm. speaks to our reality, then I find that really puzzling. Now, as a 14-year-old in the year 2000, I heard a phrase that has stayed with me ever since. When the MPP was campaigning, it said, She was sitting him not to a papa. Do you understand what that means? It means look at your reality. So which means that before you make an electoral decision, you look at your reality. Is my life the way I want it to be? And I remember when the MPP was campaigning the year 2000 in Swedru. They said, man, I'm to me why I'm Debbie. Young men, can you get married? Can you buy fuel? Can you do A, B, C, and D? So meaning that you are telling people that to make an electoral decision, you look at your reality. And I believe a lot of people are looking at that reality. And they are looking at that reality in one hand and listening to the vice president in the other hand. And the two are not sinking. Mm. So like you said, it's not about GDP, whatever, whatever. Those things matter. They are the high level economics, what they call the macro, right? And then they are the micro bits, which affect you and I on a daily. Mm. Which affect you and now the fuel price, transportation. Ask yourself, how many people now have enough money to take Trotsky's from one point to the other across a month? Are their salaries enough? If you do the math and you take out bills, taxes, utilities, do you have enough to live on? That is the critical question anybody who wants to lead this country should think about. Are my people living dignified lives? Go around. People are struggling. The KNK index. KNK is what? Four CDs, five CDs. How many people consistently can buy KNK five CDs for 30 days in a month? What's the status of salaries? The government considered introducing 50% VAT on electricity. 15% VAT on electricity? After the mounting of taxes, we saw somebody's bill in trying to import a 4 by 4 from Canada. Look at the duty. 227,000. Hmm. And yet, when you see, when you talk about these things. There are people who, I don't know how they live. Maybe they live in this utopia where everything is fine. Mm. And when you say, hey, don't talk. Hey, don't complain. Hey, don't do this. Hey, don't do that. Why are you complaining? But I mean, I, what? Are we serious? Mm. So for you, for me, the, I, the, I was, the economic I, reality, the, rea the speech it, did it not speak sink. to those realities yeah. at all. And like you said, what he should have done. And that was the part of the speech that, I'll be very honest, it upset me. Hey. I was very upset listening to that part. Where, on one hand, we've managed the economy well. On the other hand, I, didn't, I don't have decision-making yeah. powers. So when you were haranguing <laughs> other candidates who were members of the economic management team, did you, you didn't know that the EMT was only advisory. That the EMT could only give counsel. If they take it, great. If they don't, ah, me, I'm there. But the part that works there is good. We've done this. We 100,000 nurses, 100,000 days, more teachers, this, that, 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 that. And yes, people are unemployed. Where are you even getting those numbers from? Where are you getting those numbers from? Young men can't get jobs. People are done out of school five, six years. They don't have work. The other day, somebody came to see me in Tessano. He lived somewhere. What was his plea? Can you please help me get a job? It absolutely broke me. Hmm. And yet, you, you get this opportunity Hmm. You sell your vision and you never say that, oh, this is, our, I'm sorry. Look at the mounting of promises from 2013 to 2016. Wherever you went, Dr. Baumia was a star man. I bet if they were doing Ballon d'Or for politicians, they would have probably won one or two. And yet, when you get the chance, you come into office seven years. Let me ask a question. Seven years. Was it the setting? So like if it was like a town hall where there was like um, maybe workers and private sector and you was supposed to give a discussion as against a partisan crowd because once you choose a partisan crowd you you have to do the soundings right so i don't know i mean and don't get me wrong don't, don't get me wrong the speech itself was well written there are a lot of good ideas in it all right we are not rubbish in the speech what i'm trying to say is that the 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 standard that people have people people have stopped thinking about yes. ndc alone so although ndc is a big issue here People are disappointed with the political class. So it's tough. You know, you cannot, in a, in a sense, you're saying, I've done better than NDC, but I'm going to do better than Akufuado. 
which is difficult because they are they are trying to say that even Nakufado you were part of it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and all of this vibrant. and all of this is happening because the Akufado government hasn't done well. Yeah. If Akufado government had done well, wouldn't we be having this discussion? Do you get it? So the the question is what level of complicity does he have in the current situation which Ghanaians would take but because he was so prominent as the lead figure for the economy he cannot dissociate himself now some people feel it's a bit unrealistic to say you should apologize but I feel like sometimes you have to go a different track to say look like listen to Kufu Kufu said don't come and talk about MPP talk about Ghana so I think Kufu was probably trying to hint that look where the thing is reached is not about NDC versus MPP necessarily now let people know try and be more nationalistic consensus building kind of thing i think that's what was hinting but you know i don't know maybe the speech is already written sky i don't know what you think the, the, the setting did the setting also influence this in a way uh, i would i would i would i would i would speak to that in the affirmative mm. um, the setting yes because I, I think yesterday baumia was juggling a number of balls first of all he was trying to speak to a record which he would have to take together and say, look, I accept the good, I accept the bad. Um, I think he sort of tried to distance himself, in a way, from the bad, while celebrating the good. Um, there would be some reason behind that. It could well signal that perhaps maybe he had expressed certain views, except that those views have not been, or have not found expression in how government policy is implemented. But... I think critics will be justified in saying, look, yes, you are, you are part of the government. So you cannot seek in any way to depart from the bad outcomes. So that's one ball that he was trying to, to juggle. Then the other ball that he was trying to juggle has to do with speaking to the opposition's you know, promises <laughs> and the insistence on a comp... A, the, the, what's the word? Pendium. No, no, I in to how to compare records. Yes, yes, you yes. Understand? So comparison. Exactly, a comparison yes, of yes, records. Yes, yes. The opposition yes. believes that they have done better. So Baumia also, for his own reasons, believes that they did better than the opposition. Yes. So he also wanted to speak to that. You understand? Then you also have a man who wants to speak to the electorate because ultimately, whatever you say you have done, or whatever you believe you have done, whatever the opposition says that he's been able to do, those will be tested at the arena of public forums, you know, or fora, as some people yeah. would say, so that the, 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 the altar for confessing how well your policies have been <laughs> mm -hmm. over the last seven or eight years yeah. will be what? At the ballot box. Yeah, true. What people say you have been able to do. So... He was also trying, in my respectful view, to deal with that at the same time. And then now, which is the bigger one, seeking to appeal to the Ghanaian that I am different. I am my own man. I will break clean, or to a large extent, clean from the record that currently prevails. And I think it will be useful for us to contextualize what he sought to do and see whether there are gaps in it. I agree perfectly with Bernard that his speech writers did a great disservice to him. The first words that should have come out from him should have been that fellow countrymen, ahead of the 2008 elections, ahead of the 2012 elections, ahead of the 2016 elections, ahead of the 2020 elections, I together with my colleagues, made so much promises to you. But on the basis of the economic realities we face today, we have underdelivered. <clears throat> For that, I apologize. But let me go on to explain what we tried to do, what we achieved, and the reasons why we could not get you to where we say we were going to get you to. So, first of all, you have admitted that, look, you made so many promises to Ghanaians. Secondly, that you regret that you have not been able to achieve all the things you said you were going to achieve. And then thirdly, you are saying that there would have been reasons why we didn't achieve these things. 
And then you say that this is what I believe I can do if you give me the opportunity to be able to lead the effort. But you see, what they conveniently did was to completely ignore that. And that is a major blot on how the speech was written. If you look at the ideas generally expressed in the statement, or just like you had with President John Muhammad's speech, there are brilliant things that he's put in there about things he says he wants to do. Of course, there are many that are questionable, and, and we can go into the fine details of that. But in order to carry people along, because of the economic realities they face today, you needed to have made that admission. Trying to suggest it is not enough. There ought to have been a total, wholesome, open admissions that we have not been able to take you to Canaan. The reasons why we have been able to do it are A, B, C, and D. This is what I believe I can do different. Give me the mandate. I can assure you that with me in the saddle, I will be able to achieve A, B, C, and D. So there is a major blot on that failure um, to admit. And, and it, is, it is completely unforgivable. Now, it is also important that we look at the, his reality. You are the, pres the vice president of a president. If you look at the constitutional arrangement of Ghana, and what I'm going to say, yes. I'm going to deal with he himself. Okay. And then also what Ghanaians believe is the situation. Look, don't come and tell us anything to the contrary. It is the truth that when the constitution of 1992 was framed, there was an original mandate under the constitution for the vice president of Ghana mm. to be the guy leading the efforts to ensure the police administration works well. Okay. So chairman of the police, police council. council. yes. And then if you look at other provisions of the constitution, the constitution is clear that the vice president shall perform those functions that the vice the president of the republic shall delegate to him that do ABC. So people who are textual would insist that the vice president's role is narrowed by the constitution and that he supports merely what the president does. That's what textual people will say and insist that, look, when Rawlings had problems with Aka and after the alleged fight in the office of the president over matters of governance and related yeah. issues. Ultimately, he went to parliament and they removed the power the vice president originally has to administer affairs of the police service. So that constitutional amendment was made. So what is left in the constitution now has to do with delegative authority from the president. The president says, do this, do that, do That's that. That's what you that. get to do. Uh -huh. So you, do, you are not your own man in the sense of get up and do what you like. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like the, this city breakfast show. If you are sitting in the chair, you are the head of this table. Now, there are things I would want to say. You can intervene and say, hey, you can't do that. You can only say so much. This is what I would I like. You turn off the microphone. That's the end of it. You understand? I think Baumia sought to communicate that. But he is shot down by his own comments in opposition. Because what, what was he trying to say? That he is, it is true that he is the chair of the economic management team. And he sought to buy his way out. To say that it is simply an advisory council mm. committee, a subcommittee of cabinet. That is the fact. Because as the head of the economic management team, you are not on your own. You are not like the, the boss. Your mandate is subject to someone else's authority. Do you understand? Which is the president. You can write all the opinions that you like, that this is how it should be done. If the president says that, I am not going to do that, the buck stops with him. You understand? So the, the, the legal and the architectural reality is that he is not a boss to himself. But you see, he ought to have admitted this when he was in opposition. Yeah. Be because there's some, some dishonesty there, yeah. with the greatest respect. Yeah. Because when he was in opposition... Vice President Mahama, you know, was the head of the economic yes, management. Yes, yes. When Mills was president. Exactly. But he harangued him. When uh, Emisa Arthur, His Excellency of Blessed Memory, 
was the vice president. He filed a long list of questions, blasting him, harassing him on every single platform as to why he thought that they had not done well and he as vice president was not performing. The, the tag of incompetence and all of these things were stated. So when you now are in the saddle, it will be too convenient for people to seek to play up the constitutional architecture or the legal architecture and say that, hey, this is what the Constitution say. and so, it says. And so I'm limited by constitutional provisions. When by your own pronouncement, exactly. you have undone that. Uh -huh. So you see, you sacrifice the right to raise that defense yeah. to support yourself by you reason of your conduct means. in the past. Yeah. So I understand perfectly well when people say that, look, my friend, don't be hypocritical. Mm. You did this to Mr. Asa, yeah. of blessed memory, His Excellency. Yeah. And His Excellency, George Ramani Muhammad. So you can't raise that defense. And it is a legitimate point for people to make. So that people think that Dr. Baume has been disingenuous, trying to paint himself a clean man with respect to all that they have achieved. For mm. everything that is good, yes, he was responsible. Mm. He has been acclaimed as the vibrant vice president we've ever had in the history of our republic. Mm. Spear, I mean, spearheading digitization and moving the economy forward. And then suddenly when it comes to uh, issues of taxes, when it comes to issues of welfare, when it comes to what the people feel in their pockets, then he was only an advisory guy. Aha, uh -huh, you see, so that is how... So that's disingenuous. But you see, but I think we should also be deeper than that. Because, let me take one example. He is on record as having publicly stated... Mm that he did not believe that e-levy ought to have been introduced. Yeah. Or like, he said it ahead of the introduction, that look, he doesn't think that mobile money should transactions be should be taxed. Now, that is consistent with what literature appears to say. That if we truly want to formalize the economy using digital systems and solutions as the way to go, introducing taxes become an impediment, a hurdle that people must necessarily clear if they are going to engage in transactions within that ecosystem. Mm. So don't introduce it. So he's, he's in the public domain as having said that. But the government introduced it. Now, the question which you ask is whether in cabinet or whether during their discussions as a government, mm. he expressed views. And what are those views? What are the records Unfortunately, yeah. we, we are not privy to those views because... Cabinet decisions and discussions are held in secrecy. Yeah. They take a decision, and by the principles that have been bequeathed to us by, you know, Britain and, and related, you know, democracies, cabinet decisions are binding on all members, regardless of whatever orthogonal position you may have taken, you know, on, on, on a subject matter. So he cannot seek to now raise that and say that, yes, I may have different views, and those views um, were articulated at a certain platform. And so when you look at the decision, see it as the decision of Nanado Dan Kwekufodo, not my decision. When you were part of it. Exactly. Because mm. collective mm. cabinet responsibility. Binds on, it, on everyone. Exactly. Yes. Right. But if indeed in quiet he did that, I'll leave that to his conscience. I, I do not know. I don't sit in cabinet you know, meetings. People say all kinds of things. But you see, if he had been aware of these realities, perhaps he would have tempered his criticism of John Dramani Mahama, his and excellency, some of the and, 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 you know, Emisa Arthur. So people legitimately are lambasting him because they say that you have not shown that you were critical of some of these decisions. The only thing that we can take out of it, and this is why I say that we should be a bit deeper, is that by reason of the things he communicated yesterday, he is showing clearly a certain aversion to some of these policies. Because to say boldly, as vice president, and then candidate of the, uh, the, 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 the governing party, that E-Levy will be abolished when you become president. That is to say that, look, it may well be, I, I may speculate, that perhaps he disagrees with it. And mm. the record is there to back him, that he disagreed with his introduction. He spoke about what? VAT on domestic consumption, consumption of electricity. electricity. The government introduced it. Our MPs, for some reason, who 
They ought to have known better. But for some reason, they passed it into law. The president assented to it. It is now a law on the statute books of our country. Now, if the vice president indicates that as president, he will repeal that legislation or abolish that legislation, mm. you can only infer, not speaking as a matter of fact, yeah. that perhaps... It's another of the issues he, he had, had issues Exactly. With. You, you can only make that inference yeah. without speaking with you know, certainty. complete certainty that, yeah. oh, this is, this is the issue. So if we want to, a bit, to be a bit rigorous, we will go as far as saying that we can make certain inferences that maybe there are concrete decisions that this government has made with decisions he departs from, except that by reason of the principle of collective cabinet and ministerial responsibility, mm -hmm. he could not obviously have come out to say, look, I disagree with it. I mean, some people say, oh, he should have resigned and, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. You know, that is very rich. You, <laughs> you know, you can only do that in limited circumstances because the question, if you resign, then what? Can you effect the change that you want to change? So the point I'm trying to make is that Dr. Baumia may have said very fantastic things about his plans for the future, just like you had it when, in the speech of uh, John Dramani uh, Maham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But people are using legitimately his own rhetoric, his own track record, as basis to say that, yes, you would have fine ideas, but look, you promise us this, you have not been able to deliver. Now, on the basis of that submission, that is why I'm saying that the first thing, apologize. You promised so much. You failed to get us there. Mm. You did some things. Mm. Not all the things that you, you did were great. Um, there were limitations. Explain the limitations to us. Your own role in the matter. And then why you believe that you will be a clean break or you would have some departure from the existing architecture. I think that has not been properly communicated and it's a great, great, great blot on, 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 the, on the generality of the submission. Now, let me just speak to a quick, uh, some, some specifics. So, for instance, the vice president spoke about amending the constitution. This is not exactly novel because as in line with what I had heard repeatedly in parliamentary settings and, and in public discussions all over throughout my practice as a young journalist up to this point, many experts on constitutionalism have said that we need a legislation that makes it possible for all parties to buy into what is the national vision mm. as defined by the national <coughs> development uh, planning, is it? Commission. planning commission NDPC. exactly so that ppp will not come up and say this is what they want to do and that's what they are doing yeah there has to be a certain confluence we have to get to a point where we are at a convergence that all of us are feeding into a certain narrative guided by the directive principles of state policy we tell us broadly broadly what we should do in order to realize the dream of this democracy or this constitutional democracy that we are practicing the question of how to achieve it is where so many things happen remember vision 2020 oh yes under the rollings <laughs> i remember era. that when As a boy. the honorable uh, the late honorable um kojo Bawiredu, former finance minister yes 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 when he was at the finance ministry he also proposed a really grand agenda which was to be the vision that Ghana would see in some 50 or so years, if my memory serves me correctly. Fantastic things to completely transform this country. But then again, that has also failed to see the light, the, 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 the light, light of, of day. day. So the view that constitutionalists express is that perhaps we should actually ground the vision, the grand vision of the country in a certain legislative requirement. Mm. It may be in, in the constitution or some other legislation so that people will not come and do what they like. Manifestos will be guided by that. So it's a great thing he's talking about that, but it is not novel. And I find it unfortunate that in articulating the view, there's the suggestion that, oh, we have to do what, in my view, mm. will be new con you know, consultations to get that into practice in Ghana. I disagree with that because in this country, under the Mills government, we spend so much money put together the national, the constitutional review, review commission, committee, mm -hmm. yeah. which had all kinds of expert views on this particular matter. Proposals have been made to the presidency regarding how we should deal with this matter going forward. 
I do not believe with the greatest respect that this is the time to experiment with expending money on a new process of consultation. When we've already done something in the past that we've it, not yes, effected. Exactly. Right. Yeah. We've mm. spent so much money on this project. Respected Atuguba, Dr. Yeah. Atuguba, Professor Close. Atuguba, with Clement Akapam, my respected senior, yeah. and, and, and uh, so Nana Kewia Autry. Brilliant minds. Put together. I mean, the one did when Mills was president. Yeah, that's yes, right. the Constitution. They put together a brilliant mm -hmm. document. Yes. Of course. We may not agree with everything in that report, but the Ghanaian CD was spent on that project. So any government that wants to be responsible in its conduct of public affairs has got to go to that document to find out. Point well made. Uh -huh. Sky, for me, um, it's it's interesting that um, on one point, on one hand, mm -hmm. Dr. Baumia is telling us that, look, he had very brilliant ideas mm -hmm. and that for some, of the, for some of the policies that have been implemented by this government that are having very debilitating impact on our daily lives and our cost of living, etc. He disagreed with those and he's now promising that, look, when made the driver, he is going to change them, abolish them, reduce the size of the ministers to 50 and scrap the E-Levy, abolish taxes, X, Y, Z and all of that. Okay. So he is telling us that given the chance, he's going to make these changes or improvements. And so within the system in which he has had to operate, he's not had the free hands mm -hmm. to operate in, in such that due to that, we are feeling the impact we are having now. Mm -hmm. But when he had the chance, mm -hmm. he was able to do yeah. mobile money into probability mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. and that is what we are enjoying. Mm -hmm. And then he then goes on to say, so I, I get the point that he's saying that, okay, you guys are now even complaining about charges you are receiving when you transfer mm -hmm. money from your account to that. Mm -hmm. But even before we came, that opportunity was not even there, mm -hmm. all right? So given the chance, we are going to improve on these and address all those bottlenecks you are all complaining about. But for now, when I had a chance as the vice president, this was the initiative I led. Uh -huh. And so when I am made the president, then I'm going to address X and Y issues that will make your lives better. Let, let me let me now, plug into that and yes. say something. You see, when you read the speech, I read the, the speech on two different occasions yes. over overnight. Yeah, and something stands <clears throat> out. He did not want to speak to John Ramani Mahama, His Excellency, yeah, expressly, mm. but he gives a clue. And if you read that, you yeah. come to a certain conclusion. He is seeking to say, and people ha can have all kinds of views on it. That look. I have never been president, but I can say without any fear of contradiction that I have been and I am the vice president of the republic. Mm -hmm. My opponent, my main opponent, has at been some point president before. was vice president. Yes. By this speech, I am challenging him to tell us what he did, what he did within that space as vice president of the republic. So we compare records. So we compare that. And unfortunately for him, at this point in the life of the everyday Ghanaian, mm. Unfortunately for him, mm -hmm. we are not interested in that debate as we are in interested in holding him to the standard he set for himself. I would, I would, I would and the promises, that and say that yes, some people are not interested. Well, in a good debate. number of Ghanaians. Because at the end of the I day, I mean, the sentiment really, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, I'm cutting you, but the sentiment amongst many is that, look, you made us huge promises. Mm -hmm. You built castles in the air. And we are hoping to live in those castles. So don't come remind us about some wooden structures we are living in and say that, look, let's compare records. Because you told us you were made of more, you are going to bring much more. But the point I was going to make in, in, in the build-up to my case is that the other thing Ghanaians are looking for now in a leader, because it's become obvious to us that, look, we do not lack good vision. We do not lack uh, people with bright ideas for the country. In fact... We don't even need people to come with their own vision if we are to go with our policy documents and development documents that we've had over the years. We just really need people who can organize a group of competent people, regardless their background, put them together and marshal them to execute the development plans that we have. So what Ghanaians are really looking for, because we've experimented with this audacious, ambitious idea of we're going to do free SHS, we're going to do one district, one factory, and then... As the days go by, we bought into the idea. We are rolling out those ideas and we find out that, look, I mean, 
like they say, Nyansa ni team, right? And in the implementation of a brilliant idea that can be bottlenecks. Mm. So let us all come together and judge all and look at how we can find a more condu some comments. Stephen Ato, or I hope I got the same name right, says you have done some very critical analysis this morning. And what I want to ask is a driver's mate who says, I've never held the steering wheel before. Does he want to be handed a vehicle on the highway? All right. This one says, apologize, pa, with a laughing emoji. Have you ever seen or heard a politician apologize before? It's like an African oh. parent, eh? <laughs> this Can one, the African parents apologize to their children? Well, know, some, they will find some, a way of I mean, in modern, modern you parenting saying they are sorry. that <laughs> people do it. But as to whether you are a modern parent or a conservative parent, <laughs> it's, it's an entirely different matter. So in that case, Dr. Bamiya will always be a modern <laughs> parent, right? All right. This one says, so what of the literature where uh, Kodro Plonkuma said that Dr. Bamiya was instrumental in the implementation of the e-levy? Okay. And it says, Dr. Bamiya has become your hypocritical politician. Kessel from Ridge. This one says, Dr. Bamiya is annoying me with this average currency depreciation thing. He's just, well, he's just been insincere if you like with this far for, for with this far for too for too long now you know better how do you justify one dollar to 12.50 ghana cds today being better than one dollar to six cds in a previous administration we know the price of king k today what is this he and his team should credit us with some intelligence good morning city crew i always believed i've always believed dr Bamia was sidelined from his duty so that I think he's running to the finance minister. That's his speculation. Mm. And he's saying that he believes Dr. Bamia is now being used to cover the finance minister's tracks. Okay. Chidudu. Chichidudu. Eli or Eli from Hohoi. Okay. says, can we actually identify any significant government achievement with all the revenue? They cannot claim economic performance in 2017 because that was projected to go by 8% due to the investment made by the previous government. The current problems we are going through are largely avoidable, but for their populist policies and reckless decision making. Mm. Some more send that. Right. There's anybody who says that Dr. Baumia spoke against the introduction of, of e levy is not being truthful. He only said something against taxing Momo long before the issue of e levy. In fact, he refused to de defend his view when e levy was being discussed. He should keep quiet. Oto in Abeka. And I think the news stories, if you go back into the archives, I think the information minister did say that the finance minister was against the... Um, he suggested a threshold, the 100 CD threshold, mm. to protect the, the poor. The vulnerable. If The poor and vulnerable. If you go through a lot of the stories at the time, a lot of those stories seem to tally and meet at that point. No. Yeah, I mean, uh, that anyway. may well be. But on, on the matter, I think I, I, I indicated that. I, I think it was on, on Peace FM or so that the question was asked whether he thought that, you know, Momo or yeah. mobile should money transactions should be taxed. And he said that he didn't think that that's the, because it would undermine. It I mean, affects the poorest of the poor. Exactly. Form. I mean, if mm, you yeah. read literature around this, the view is that everywhere it was introduced, it had the negative. It was a bit of, yeah. Exactly impact of discouraging people yes th there's there's so, that yeah so so there's that, that anyway that that that, that is that coffee Boache says um how can dr baumia in one breath say he had the opportunity to lead the digital agenda but never had the opportunity to make economic impact though he was the head of the emt better than team so dr baumia can share in the government's glory but not in his failures does it mean to tell us every good thing the government has done was because of his advice and the wrongs happened because his advice was not taken. Mm. He says he should credit us with some intelligence, please. Pa mm. Willi, I shall send that. This yeah. one says, in re with regard to Dr. Baumia's bold <laughs> cause the address visionless, how can one man treat a whole country like we are one year, one year old? Okay. George and Kofi, they are very upset. This one says, I think the politicians are not taking it seriously. They are just playing with us. How can Dr. Baumia say all this knowing very well he's part of the same people implementing them? I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Intema says, concerning the rate of depreciation of the CD, Baumia mm -hmm. is saying that the depreciation of the CD from 1 to 4 is faster than from 4 to 15. Okay. <laughs> Just one. Okay. This one says, my takeaway from the vice president's speech. One, he's lost touch with reality. Okay. Two, he knows that some of the taxes are nuisance taxes, but there's nothing he can do about them now unless he's president. He's not in charge as someone else is. The speech was 
rhetoric as usual and evidence that he's just a Manchurian or a Mancurian candidate. Not too sure about the pronunciation, but that's fine. Uh, Dr. Baumia was blaming the banking sector cleanup and COVID as reasons the economy suffered. They budgeted $9 billion and spent $25 billion and counting. With COVID, they rather benefited than they lost. They got $22 billion, used less in fighting COVID, and then wasted the rest. CDP said by 70% annually. It was four before they took over. So the so-called competent government that claims their annual depreciation is 10%, the CD is now, the CD to dollar is now 12.3. The vice president cannot run away from the problems mm. and claim he wasn't in charge. Stephen in Accra sent that particular message. Mm. Loads of messages coming through reflecting on Dr. Baomir's board. Uh, it's called board, uh, board vision for uh, the country. Dr. Baomir's uh, statement, his policy, his vision for the people of Ghana in a bid to uh, you know, get their mandates when they are mandates in the upcoming election. So I, I think that now we can say that the campaign trail, the battle lines are drawn. We, we have both flag bearers and each of them are hitting the road. So Dr. Baumier is telling us that he's the new guy. He's the new guy on the block. He's the man with a new vision. He's going to be his own man. But he has a test already, you know, which is his choice of a uh, running mate. You know, we, we, we've been hearing from the grapevine that his choice is not the choice of some quarters and there's a very deep-seated uh, conversation ongoing. So his, his, you know, his, the, the narrative of him being his own man, we, we all live to see whether or not he'll have his own way, even with his running mate choice and all in, of that. In terms of the person he picks? Yeah. I think, Richard, I, I think he finds himself in a very interesting position. Very. Many years ago, the president, when he was candidate, also had to make a call. And if the stories of the time are true, when the president decided to settle on Dr. Baumia, he got a lot of opposition. Yeah. Because he didn't, that pair didn't look, if, if you looked at it, Dr. Baumia didn't look like somebody who could win you an election. Because he was a new so guy. So he's also was... facing that same challenge. Yeah. He has to figure out who can complement what I have. Because... When you pick a running mate, it's an issue of the person who best complements the, the ticket. One, the person who can help you bridge gaps in places where you are lacking. Mm. Maybe bring in the numbers, help you get crossover appeal and that kind of thing. So it is an extremely critical decision he has to make. Now, coupled with, based on all the reactions we are getting this morning, his own, how he sells his own vision, his own persona, his own credibility, how he sells that. So it is a very complex time for him. And I think yesterday, kind of, I don't know whether he's gone through the reaction. I don't know whether he has sampled feedback. I don't know. But if people are telling him what the reaction is, then he has to understand he has an uphill task of one, selling his own self and yeah. credibility, two, getting a candidate that will generate that crossover appeal and like almost tip the scales to almost even out in his favor. Plus a candidate who can win you an election. Plus what the party wants later this year in the election. So, so a very dicey mix for him there. Um, <clears throat> he, ha he has a difficult... He, he, he is in a difficult position, is he not? I mean, look, the reality is that for as long as he remained vice president, you would always have some moderating influence mm -hmm. from the person who is the ultimate boss mm. because uh, until the president made him candidate Nanado Danko Ekufuado yeah. made him vice president running mate uh, running mate yeah. yes nobody really knew about him like sure. that and John Kufo his excellency made that that, that yeah. point yesterday in a brilliant way so it is just like I want to do something you know you would normally go and see Papa and say this is what I want to do mm. what's your view he always will have some moderating influence. Say, well, yes, it's a good idea. Mm. You want to do this, but this is how you do it. As to whether you take that on board ultimately, mm. it's an entirely different matter. But you see, when you are serving a under a precedent, there are things you cannot ignore mm. because whether you like it or not, it is possible that presidential authority can play a part in deciding whether or not you w was, win was, was it easier for candidate Nanado to have Baumea as his running mate because then, I mean, compared to now, mm -hmm. that uh, Dr. Baumea as flag bearer is the 
vice president. So I'm, I'm just trying to ask if it was easier for him to choose Baumia and have his way compared to Baumia saying, I've found my own man, I've found my own woman, and I think this is the person who will compliment me well. This is the person who can win as the ticket. You see, uh, it is not as simple as that. Mm. There are a number of reasons for it. Let me speak to history. If you listen to those who were in the meeting at Alisa, where Dr. Baumia was announced as the running mate for uh, candidate Akufuado, yeah. there was a major storm in that meeting. Some people said he did not have a party card. So, look, let's not even consider him. There are party loyalists who have been in this from the beginning. Give them the chance. Mm. But there was a clear voice from John Kufo, if, if the records are correct, that look, yes, he may be an outsider in the views of... A the political Muslim. novice exactly. for that matter. But the constitutional provisions that require that the party should have a... or, or the, 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 part, the person should have a party card. Mm. We as a party can waive that requirement. So they waived it and he became, you know, running what do you call mate. it? Running mate. So it is the same thing you would have ordinarily because the party is still in power. Because at the time, John Kufo was, was, in power, as was, well. was power as president of the republic. But then Nanado was not the vice the, president. See, so in this, in, on, on that occasion, mm -hmm. Nanado Danko Kufado had resigned as yeah. minister for foreign affairs. So he was no longer, strictly speaking, and that's the, subject to the, the influence, the right? Exactly. And he had become the leader of the party. Yeah. In this particular case, what you have is that technically, yeah. by the MPP's constitutional architecture, he's the leader, leader of the party. Of the party. Yeah. However, in terms of the state and governance... subject to the authority and direction, mm. and I'm using the word not in yeah. the autocratic sense, yeah. of the president of the republic. So there are things he would want to do. I, I think he would have to deploy a lot... Hmm of wisdom, yeah. maturity, yeah. diplomacy, to be able to sway the interest that will come around the question of who should become vice presidential yeah. material. Because whether you like it or not, there are many interests that you have to, yeah. to serve. And the fallout also of the, this the, can go the a long way. The regional factor, yeah. the, the, the regional balance issue, where you are from and where the person should come from, where the party's base is, so many things to, to, to and, and the with. interest of interested parties exactly exactly ah. and 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 okay. finally yeah i i think look we should not continue to hear governments have issued a statement suspending this legislation or that legislation it is not correct practice it is in my respectful view unlawful unconstitutional government's job is to propose legislation consistent with government policy the people of Ghana, through their parliament, consider the proposal through all the phases of the legislative process and then will pass that legislation, the legislative proposal if they believe that that is what government should be doing. Okay. So you went to parliament and said you wanted to impose uh, VAT on uh, electricity consumption yeah. at home. The people of Ghana, through their parliament, considered it and in their wisdom, passed it into law. Now, it moved from them to the president. The president would then sign it in line with the constitution, it gets gazetted, and it becomes law. The executive has absolutely no authority, in my respectful view, mm. to get up one morning and say that, as for this particular law, we are not implementing it. When you do that, you are undermining the legislative authority of parliament. Parliament is the only institution that can impose or not impose a particular law to the extent that the constitution allows the imposition of that law. Of course, the executive has a certain narrow remit mm -hmm. to pass its own, uh, to, to, to introduce his own legislation in the form of executive instruments and all of that. But in this case, this is a law passed by parliament. It is just akin to saying that, oh, the government gets up one money and says, going forward, uh, it will no longer implement the law on armed robbery. So it is okay. People should go and, and get involved in that criminal conduct. But, but, but it is, people will say that it is gross, yeah. but it is akin to doing that. Parliament passes a law. If you disagree with the law or you have had a change of view or go, heart, back. go back to the people. Tell them that, look, we took this position based on ABCD. There have been intervening circumstances. So with the greatest respect, we are appealing to the good people of this house to, to have a reconsideration. We want to repeal it. Let them say that we agree with you. Let them say, no. Let's stay. And when they say, let it stay, you, you, you deal with it. 